hopefully there's no static going on today. We've got some extra women in the house, uh, some of my leader team. And uh, if you're in the chat box, if you can just let me know that the audio is okay, that'd be great. Um, I am going to introduce you to my two sisters in Christ here, and then I'm going to, um, they're going to go off the screen, and I'm going to pray us in and, and go into our training. Whoops, I forgot to go back up to the top of the PowerPoint. There we are. <laughs> okay, good. Audio sounds great. Fantastic. Thank you, Jesus, for the audio that works, audio and video with three people on the screen. Uh, really, that's very cool. So um, in front of you, you have me, and I'll introduce myself in just a minute, but you also have Karen, so wave Karen. Uh, that's Karen up there, and um, she is going to, uh, she's here in the Ta Dallas, Texas area. She's in McKinney, Texas. She's the founder and president of Rama Counseling Associates and uh, has a team, a biblical counseling center. Uh, she'll be introducing herself more a little bit later when I bring her on the screen uh, to share. And then we have Rachel. Uh, Barrett Dulcine, uh, and she is in Maryland, yay, and so she is also one of our leaders uh, here with NACLI, and she uh, has an amazing company called Compass, and uh, she trains uh, nonprofits, she does the Small Business Institute, uh, she's also launching a new, ver new part of her business called Curriculum Girl, that's very exciting in 2016, uh, wink, wink. Um, I just called her out, so now she has to do it. <laughs> That's how it works, babe. Um, so, yay, I know, yay audio, all clear. So let me say a quick prayer, and um, hey, gal, can you go ahead and turn off your video and audio, and we're going to just rock and roll here, and I'll bring you back on in a little bit. Okay, awesome. Uh, all right, ladies, let's go ahead and pray ourselves in. Father God, thank you so much for this time together today, Lord, that we can come together from all across the United States and beyond. Uh, Canada, we've got in the house. We've got um, Pennsylvania in the house. We've got California in the house. We've got all sides of our country and up and above. And Lord, we are, we are a virtual sisterhood. And I got an email this morning from a woman that said she found our website and was so excited because of uh, the word sisterhood. And she, uh, she was just excited about that as a part of um, what she was looking for. So, Lord, I thank you that we can come together today. We can learn. We can grow. We can be vulnerable. And we can say, gosh, we don't know everything. Of course we don't. How would we? And so, Lord, the, the, really the power in leadership is uh, letting go of our need to know, letting go of our need to control, letting go of our our hidden agendas or uh, our motives that might not be right and Lord really allowing you to work allowing you to work in our lives and our businesses and in all parts so Lord we welcome you here and we thank you for um, the, the gifts that you've given each of us which are different and unique in Jesus name we pray amen all right ladies are you excited uh, this is very cool we have uh, this is the first time I've brought a couple leaders on the call and I'm going to be doing that um, again next month and we're getting ready to do a lot of really uh, fun new things for NACWI. Hi Annette, so all of those of you that are in the house that just joined us, go ahead and type into the chat box. We did this a few minutes ago but it was before we went live. Go ahead and type and say hello and where you are. Uh, we've got newbies in the house, uh, a woman uh, that found us who's up in Pennsylvania. Um, and so we want to network. We're here to connect with each other. That's why we're here. Uh, we're here to connect, we're here to learn, we're here to grow. The three words that NACWI is built around is connect, create, collaborate. We do that every single day uh, as a unit uh, in our private uh, conversation room, our private Facebook group. And we don't allow any, um, we don't allow the three J's, judgment, uh, justification, or jealousy. We don't, we don't allow that there. We just, we, we don't go there and we, we don't allow uh, the things that can really ha be harmful to women. Uh, I don't I don't believe in that and we don't go there so <clears throat> let's dive in lessons in learning the hard way uh, leadership as a Christian woman and entrepreneur I am um, let me go ahead and ask has anybody learned the hard way in business have you learned the hard way uh, by doing it wrong have you learned uh, that sometimes leadership is really yucky and you want to just basically go back and sit in the chair in the back of the room uh, all of you are leaders all of you are leaders uh, I want you to really own that today. I want you to embrace it. Uh, I guess I should introduce myself. <laughs> Hello. Um, my name is Diane Cunningham. For those of you that are new, some of you know, have known me for years, and some of you are brand new here, just found our website. 
so I have my master's degree in education. Uh, I am the president and founder of the National Association of Christian Women Entrepreneurs. Uh, I do coaching, mentoring. Uh, I'm an author of six books now. Amazing. Uh, that's a God thing for sure. Uh, I am a fun friend. I am addicted to coffee. Uh, I was addicted to alcohol, but I'm not anymore. Praise Jesus. Uh, and I'm a leader, a woman of God, risk taker, speaker, teacher, connector, and a be brave girl. Be brave today, girl. That today is very important to me. Uh, today is all we have. Uh, we've, lo we've actually lost a member of our sisterhood uh, a few months ago. Today is all we have, my friends. Um, so if you're stuck in the past or in the future, this is anxiety if you're in the future, and this is depression if you're in the past. Uh, these are bonus tips uh, just coming from my counseling background that you're going to have uh, as we go along today. And this is me holding the torch uh, for, as a leader, guess what? Uh, I need you to say, as we're going along, I need you to say, I'm with you, amen. I need you to have a conversation with me today. Uh, because as a leader, your job is to hold that torch. My torch is over there somewhere. I should probably have grabbed it. But your job as a leader is to hold the torch for your people. They don't know how to find you if you don't have the torch up high enough. And, you know, when we get scared and people are attacking us and when people are questioning every move we make, it's easy for that torch to get heavy. Uh, you might be in this room today feeling like the weight of the world is getting heavy on you. Uh, and if that is the case, you're in the right place. You're in the right place. Uh, NACWI is all about connecting and living your calling. Uh, if I don't know the answer, guess what? There's, we've got a whole big old group that has the answer. We have people that can help you. We have the planning resources and education and networking. Uh, and so we're going to invite those of you that are not members to come join us. Uh, that's really important. And uh, we're going to actually ask you right now. <laughs> look, look at that. Uh, we're going to invite you to join us. There's some here that used to be members, uh, and there's some here that already are members, and there's some here that have never been members. Well, uh, for $197, which is actually that membership level is going to be going away, uh, we've got 59 days left before that goes away. You get access to our 18 classrooms, 12 benefits, powerful life change. And it's way, you get way beyond. You get so much value. It's hard for me to comprehend uh, the value. And, and I don't have to explain it because the members explain it actually for us. Uh, so 59 days left to join at that rate and be grandfathered in at that rate uh, for the lifetime of your membership. Hello, come on. Uh, but, uh, and, you, uh, and I guess, one of the things you get is the creativity circle. You get all these cool things when you join. Got, you get all, a lot of them instantly. And then you get a lot of them uh, as a, just a part of being in our sisterhood, hanging out with us day to day. Um, here's the other two membership levels that we have. So we have the 497 for the premium. That includes the live conference, which many of these people in the room have been to. And that also includes the virtual conference, which we just had. So you'll get tickets to both of those and four of my best-selling programs uh, that are instant downloads, okay? Yeah, napkin coaching. I know, it's amazing. Uh, this is one of the things you also get, which is called the Hard Art Canvas. Uh, and that, this is one of the things that we teach on how you really narrow your focus with your business. Who, how, when, what, where, and wow. And really, this is, this is another little napkin experience that I drew out, drew out on, in a blank journal. And then, be, then realize this is exactly what we all need to figure out. This is exactly what we all need to figure out for our business. And our top level membership is our leadership membership. And uh, some of the leaders are in the house right here. Uh, so this is our deluxe membership, and it includes those same tickets, those same programs. But it also now, this is cool, we just merged these. Now you get access to the Christian Women's Leadership Institute. That's a whole online classroom. And you get to become a certified group facilitator. And you also get access to my Create Your Association program. Uh, both of these, so huge value, uh, uh, $2,000 worth of value in 997 And we also have the payment plans. Yes. Okay, let's dive into the training here. Here we go. Leadership is a process of influence. Anytime you seek to influence the thinking, behavior, or development of people in their personal or professional lives, you are taking on the role of a leader. Uh, this is from Lead Like Jesus. So I'm going to ask you guys questions as we go along. I want you to all type into the chat box right now another word you would use for leader. One word. What, what other word would you use uh, if you're describing leader or leadership? Type into the chat box. Okay, we've got mentor, guide, servant, uh, inspirer. Excellent. This is helpful. So very good. Role model. Okay, so uh, as a leader, and remember, I'm not talking about me. I am talking about me, but I'm talking about all of us. 
all of us are leaders. Uh, sometimes we don't want that. Uh, you know, uh, there are, there's times in our life that the leadership burden is very heavy. It's very heavy. Uh, if you have felt the burden of leadership as, uh, as a beast on your back, uh, go ahead and tell me that too. Just say yes, hello, amen, it's exhausting. Uh, and really, if we don't get honest about this, one of my missions is really to help us be honest. We need to get honest. We need to have the hard conversations. We need to not avoid the challenges. Uh, and that's easier said than done. It's great for me to say that right here, uh, but there, there are certain things that, that cause me anxiety, okay? And I'm sure there's things that cause you anxiety. So when we are in that anxiety mode, uh, often we go fight or flight, okay? So I either tend to run towards the problem or run to the back room to hide in the closet. My natural tendency is to go run and hide in the closet. But when you're the leader, guess what? Hello, you can't. So these are things you have to really be aware of. Leadership is really about self-awareness. Leadership is influence. It's about the people, places, and things. Uh, have you had the, the, the situation where you've gone to a place and you said, you know, I'm, just, I'm not going to be a leader here. I lead everywhere. I, I don't lead. I'm not going to lead here. I'm going to sit in the back. And then your, your natural tendency is then you end up leading the whole show again. Anybody experience that uh, in their life? <laughs> yeah, I knew you had, Rachel. Um, and I'm going to guess that, that most of you here in this room, really, you're natural leaders. You're natural leaders. Um, tell me, uh, here's, this, here's a question for you. What are some of the gifts that you see in the leaders that are around you? Give me words. that uh, These are different words. You've already shared some of the words. Uh, what are some of the gifts that you see uh, are part of good leadership. Uh, so uh, good leadership, compassion, faith. Uh, do they are they honest? Are they have a good character? Uh, what are some of the things you see? Uh, and these could be leaders in you know, the church. They could be leaders in companies. They could be leaders um, in your neighborhood. There, there could, there's lots of different leaders that we have. There's all sorts of groups that we're all members of. <clears throat> this is the acronym that I came up with about a year ago, year and a half ago, uh, for what leaders, leader stands for for me, okay? And remember, each of you are leaders. Everything you learn here today, please, um, you know, take it with a grain of salt. Uh, this, is the, this is the Diane Cunningham version of leadership and life lessons. If you disagree, well, you know, go after it. Uh, that's good. I, I, I want you to agree to disagree, but I also want you to go and take your message. Here's what I do. Here's what I don't want you to do. I don't want you to disagree and uh, complain and moan. I want you to go and take your message to the world because you know what? You have your people. You have your people. You have your tribe. You have your, your team. You have your staff. You have your, uh, your volunteers. You have these people. Take your message to the world. Raise up. Raise up. Okay? So I see leadership as these things. I see leadership is about love. It's about loving the people that God has given you. Okay? Um, you know, you might not like them sometimes. Uh, hello, you might not like them, but you're gonna you're gonna love them. And you, and this is uh, all of you are leaders in your families as well. Uh, e is about energy. You know, the leader is gonna set the pace. That's Xander. The leader is gonna set the pace, and the the energy is really gonna be infectious. So if you are a low energy person, you're gonna have to crank it up a little bit. Okay, you're going to have to really maybe add an extra coffee to your, your system. But the leader is going to set the tone for the group. Now, uh, does that need to be mean you act, act like me? No, you need to act like you. Act like you and embrace the energy because your group needs, um, they, your group is going to become, uh, they're going to become accustomed to that energy level. Okay, <clears throat> A is about action. As a leader, you're going to have to act. And then the next one is D, decide. Act and decide over and over and over and over again. It, when you avoid those actions and those decisions, the whole team suffers, the whole group falls apart because somebody has to make a decision. The faster you decide in your business, the more successful you will be. Okay? Decisions really are, are a key impact of your business. And oftentimes we get stuck in there. We get stuck. I, I, I'll speak for myself. I get stuck. In, my, in some decisions, maybe the harder ones or the ones that include a lot of money or the ones that include a longer commitment of time. What are some of the things you get stuck in? Let me ask you that. I'm going to be asking you coaching questions throughout the time uh, because that's what I do. I'm a coach. I ask questions. 
What are some of the things what the, that get you stuck in your business as with decisions? Perfectionism, excellent. Uh, yes. Uh, what else gets you stuck? Is it making a long-term commitment? I mean, I'm in long-term commitments right now. I have. Uh, they're just finishing up one one-year commitments with certain people on my team. Fear gets us totally stuck. Uh, fear all the time. We have all this fear, and nobody wants to talk about it. Well, we we talk about it. We talk about it all the time. And it comes out in all these different ways. Uh, there's a hundred forms of fear, my friends, and it comes out as snarky. It comes out as uh, depression. It comes out as anxiety. It comes out as controlling behavior. It comes out as nitpicking. It comes out as anxiety uh, and uh, all these things. Uh, for, uh, what's it called? Imposter syndrome. Okay, so A is action. D is decisions. E is the example. As a leader, you're going to set the example. You're going to have that energy, and you're also going to set the example. So really, what are you bringing to the team? What are you bringing to the team? And uh, how can you make it repeatable? Uh, we're in the process of switching up. Every year we change up our membership a little bit and upgrade and let things go. That's exactly how you're going to have to run a business. You're going to have to really take inventory, what's working, what's, what's not, and you're going, to, you're going to revise. You're going to do a little makeover. So we're in the process of that uh, for NACWI, and we're really – looking at what, uh, what do we need to keep, and then also setting up things that are duplicatable. Be duplicatable in your business. Create systems that you can duplicate, whether you have one person there, five people, or 25, or 250, okay? That's going to change your business. And then our, the R of leadership is what are the results? Uh, they always jokingly say, you'll know you're a leader if you have people like walking behind you following what you're doing. Uh, and if you don't, then you might not be leading yet. <laughs> So check on your results. This is again, um, you know, there are certain things that I'm not good at, uh, or or maybe not as good at, as other areas, and that's true for each of us. You're going to have your top five strengths, and and if you don't know them yet, you need to take the strengths finder assessment. You need to know your top five strengths. Things that fall in the category that are not there, hire help. Hire help. I have a a, a huge team, six people that I hire that work for me. I've paid a couple of them today, and paying another one. These are people on my team. These are women that are on my team that I've gathered up that are way better at these things than I am. Okay? So check your results. The leader is in charge. As a CEO, I want everybody to type into the box right now. I am the CEO. I need you to say it. I need you to type it in right now. I am the CEO. I am a CEO. I am the CEO. Say it, say it, say it. Say it again and again today. Uh, we talk about this a lot. I need you to claim it, own it, walk in it, uh, have victory over this because, because why? Uh, you are the CEO. If you are an entrepreneur, now I, I never set out to be an entrepreneur. I never set out to be a CEO. I didn't say that when I was a little girl. Oh, I'm going to grow up and be an entrepreneur. I didn't even know what the word meant even like after I was doing it. Uh, the whole thing kind of scares me if I think about it. If I think about being a CEO and a uh, entrepreneur, it really, you know, kind of is frightening, actually. Um, and if you're not frightened, then maybe you're not doing it big enough, because you're going to have a lot of frightening decisions to make that are going to impact a lot of people, and you're going to have to sign contracts for things that you don't know if anybody's going to come yet. Yes, you're going to do that. You're going to do that over and over again. And guess what? If you promote it, they're going to come. I'm, talk, I'm talking about the NACWE conferences. I'm talking about the NACWE membership. I'm talking about the uh, Hard Art Retreat. Uh, Robin, yeah, if somebody can answer that for her. Actually, I'm going to grab my book here. You know, it's good to be, have a, be a pack rat and have everything right here. This is the Strengths Finder Assessment, Robin, and it's a $20 book that you can go, oops, can you guys see that? It's a $20 book that you're going to want to get, and then it gives you a printout and a report. Uh, that shows you the things that you your the top five things you're great at. So yay, uh, we use it a lot, and I use it with all my coaching clients. Okay, so uh, next thing is expectations versus reality. Okay, so as in a leader, as a leader, you're going to make a lot of mistakes. If you have made mistakes, please type yes. If you make made mistakes in your business, yes. If you made if you've made mistakes just this week, oh yeah, hello, many 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 mistakes. And you're going to have all these expectations versus reality. Uh, you're going to, uh, I know for me, uh, what I've been realizing more and more is I have very high expectations of myself and on everybody else. And, and really, it's unrealistic. It's unrealistic. And I've had to be um, really talked to recently about that from in, in my personal life and in my business life. Guess what? You're both. 
you're you're in your personal life and you're in your business life. You're the same person. Hello. But your expectations versus reality are if they are in a disconnect, that's going to cause you that anxiety. Okay? Uh, that's the uh, dissonance, okay, it is one of the terms. It is basically when things are off between what you expect and real life, it's going to cause you to uh, have depression, anxiety, confusion, and you're going to have to really watch those expectations of yourself. You're going to have to watch the um, what's reality for your team as a leader, and what's uh, and and then also remember going back to the strengths and also your area of expertise. Okay, so the things I'm good at, uh, guess what? Some of the people on my team are not good at those, and I have to remember that they don't know what I know. I don't know what they know. Remember that. Um, I don't know what Rachel knows. I don't know what Annette knows. I don't know what Barb knows or what Patty knows. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not living in your head. I don't live there. Hi, Kristen. Oh my gosh, it's so great to see you. Um, I don't live in your head. You don't live in mine. So we've got to really um, make sure we aren't assuming that we know what somebody else knows or assuming we know what they want or assuming we know what they're thinking. We have to really begin to verbalize. I mean, remember, use our words like grown-ups. So we have to learn to verbalize what are we expecting, what is part of the job description, what is part of the leader contract, what is part of our coaching contract. We have to really get very clear on what our expectations are and then also allow room for imperfection. Allow room for reality to hit because it will. It will. It will hit all the time. Okay. And then the more you love your decisions, the less you need others to love them. You're going to have people that don't agree with you. You're going to have people that, that don't like what you're doing. You're going to have people that complain about everything you, you offer. Or and, and hopefully really what you're going to be doing is more and more you're going to be setting your boundaries. You're going to be setting your boundaries as a leader and, and protecting the boundaries of your group and, and keeping a safe haven. Uh, but you're also always going to have people that disagree. And so it's, it's really learning how do you handle that. How do you handle the disagreeers? How do you handle them with love? How do you how do you make them feel heard? But also not. Uh, I mean, it, they do not get to decide. They do not get to decide. They are not the CEO of your company. Um, if they are a part of that leadership team, well, yeah, let you're going to give them voice and listen to them. But we have to make sure we are not trying to please everyone and everything. Uh, when you get into this is very important. And if you don't hear anything else right here from me right now, uh, write this down. When you get into proving yourself to people, uh, it's a really a horrible feeling. It's a horrible feeling of uh, that you're not enough, that what you're offering isn't enough, that you're not lovable enough, that you're not worthy enough. Well, and it's exhausting. So uh, let's really work on not doing that to ourselves and not doing that to our, our people. Make sense? Everybody with me? Hello? Okay, I think you are. Uh, so you're going to have to make hard decisions. Okay, good. Okay, so here are some of the things that come up. These are the things we don't talk about. Ready? We don't talk about our ego. We don't talk about our pride. We don't talk about our fear and we don't talk about our conflict. You know, we don't like those things. They're kind of like, eek! Uh, what will they think if I blank? So I want you to fill that in. If you, as the leader, uh, you need to fill this in right now and write it in the room. Write it in the chat box. What will they think if I, yes, there it is. Uh, Karen nailed it. Woo! You get a gold point. Gold star. What will they think if I fail? That's the number one thing. What will they think if it doesn't work? What will they think if, I, if the whole thing falls apart? What will they think if uh, this if nobody comes to the webinar? What will they think if nobody shows up for the conference? What will they think? What will they think? Uh, these are the things that we have to talk about as leaders. Yes, and that's the other piece, Barb. What will they think if I succeed? That's the other piece of it. There's a, there's a fear of failure and there's a fear of success. They walk side by side, they sneak around, and they, they talk to each other. And you know what? There's this fear of success. We had a conversation about this in the NECWI group this uh, last couple days. There's a fear of success because you know what? We, we aren't supposed to get ahead of our sisters. We were just not. We're not supposed to shine brighter. We're not supposed to be up there on the stage dancing uh, because somehow we're supposed to stay with the crowd. We're supposed to stay with the crowd and uh, mix in and mingle and really fit in and not stand out. And I'm calling you out on that. I'm calling you out on that. We have to stand up. We ha you have to grab the microphone. You have to talk about your fear. You have to, have a, you have to have a safe way to deal with your conflict. 
you have to work on your pride and your ego because that's probably keeping you from the victory. It's keeping you from the victory. It's keeping you from the victory. Let me show you some types of leaders, and I want to get uh, to the. I want to bring my leaders on. So let's uh, finish this up. Types of leaders: pace-saving leader, do as I do and do it now. I mean, simple enough. <laughs> authoritative leader, come with me. This is all from a Harvard study by Daniel Goleman. Uh, authoritative leader, come with me. Basically, come on. You know, I'm going to show you how to do this. Okay. Affili affiliative leader, people first. Coaching leader, try this. Try this and see if it works for you. Uh, try this and oh, let's see if that works. Um, you know, you don't know until you know, and you don't know until you try. So uh, when people say, "Oh, I'm not going to do that," well, uh, I don't agree with that. Uh, coercive leader, do what I tell you to do. Now that's a different leadership style. And then democratic leader, what do you think? Uh, and so these are just some different types of leaders. And um, I did a lot of research on this for this training. And then what is holding you back from stepping into your role as a leader? Is it the fear? Is it the imposter syndrome, perfectionism? I know you're all leaders in all sorts of places in your life. Um, some of those related to your business and some related to church activities and, and kid activities and all sorts of things. Uh, so what is holding you back from stepping into your role as leader? You can answer me here, uh, uh, but, and, but more importantly, you need to answer for yourself. Okay? Thank you for uh, the feedback, guys. Um, this is awesome. <clears throat> but... Uh, all I know is it's a, it's a dance. Leadership is a dance uh, for me. It, it's like stepping forward, kind of getting afraid, coming back. Stepping forward, getting afraid, coming back. Back and forth, back and forth. And you're going to walk through that over and over and over again. It doesn't ever go away. You don't ever graduate from leadership school. You don't. You're always going to be, there's going to be a new lesson every single day for you to learn. Guess what? That's how it is. That's how it is for, for us as women, as Christians, as parents, as partners, as friends, you're going to learn by doing the, being in the, on the game, being in the field. The awe factor. Um, I don't know what this has to do with leadership. I'm sure it has something to do with it, but I mean, I made this up. <laughs> so, awareness, willingness, and enthusiasm. I think these are the things that will set you apart. Uh, you need to be aware of yourself and others. How are you coming across? Are people, um, are you, is your tone uh, not not reading correctly across a, a, a little computer screen. If your tone is wrong, it, it's going to be heard. So awareness of yourself and others, willingness to change, willingness to be coachable, willingness to uh, not know the answers, willingness to ask the question, and the enthusiasm. You've got to have that enthusiasm. All of these things are what I, are what I see as the awe factor of really being a pie piper of the people uh, and really learning to gather the troops. Uh, these are important things. So the mistake that I have made over and over again as a CEO, you guys ready for this? Because I want to bring my ladies to the, uh, the screen here in a minute and uh, have them share their mistakes. The mistake I have made over and over again as a CEO, oh, here it is, is not asking for help. Not asking for help. Uh, and uh, I'm going to guess, has anybody else uh, made that same mistake, not asking for the help, really sitting, like sometimes I'll sit here and think, oh my gosh, I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to do this. You know, for days, weeks, months. I have asked, uh, I have been stuck for months on something that if I had asked just one person or like a little group of people, somebody knew right away. Somebody knew right away how to help me. And it was way easier than I thought it was. And, yeah, and sometimes I pay for that help. Sometimes it just comes, at, you know, comes to me as a donation. It depends. Be willing to pay for the help, sisters. Be willing to ask for help and then be willing to pay for the help. Amen? Let's do an amen, amen, amen. And guess what? If you ask the wrong people, Ask somebody else. Just keep going. Don't. I, I mean, I've asked a million. I've I've paid for things that never worked. I've I you know there's a, a term in business called sunk cost. S U N K. Somebody write this down for me. S U N K. Sunk cost. There's a whole lot of things that you're gonna pay for that you never use, didn't work, you don't like. Uh, really, it's a sunk cost. Let it go. Let it go. Go on with your life. Let yourself off the hook. Let yourself off the hook. We've got to ask for help if we're gonna build a business. Because you know what? It takes a village. It really takes a village. How could it work? Here's some questions I posted on Facebook this morning. <clears throat> I want you to think about these. How could it work? If you, if you are building a, um, an, an empire, an association, a group, a tribe, how could it work? How could it work? Who knows more about this than me? Who can do this besides me? Who can do this better than me? I mean, bring it. Bring it to the table. Or who can go out and duplicate this and do it with their own? The reason I created, let me tell you two key things you need to hear me say. Okay? Amen, Barb. 
the reason I created NAC Week is I wanted to find all of you. So, hi, I found you, and now you're here. Some of you are here. We're inviting hundreds and hundreds and thousands more to come join us. Thousands, actually. Come on, people. Um, so, I created NAC Week because I wanted to find you. I, I think you wanted to find me, too. Did you? I think you were feeling isolated. Hello, we made a place so you won't feel isolated anymore. So I created NACWI for that. Then we rose up leaders. Okay, I've got leaders here I'm about to uh, teach, bring to the table. The Christian Women's Leadership Institute. So I can teach you how to lead groups for your business. Okay, so then let's, let me show you the next phase here. The next phase that I added was create your own association. Why did I do that? Because all of these leaders here, all of you, need to create your own tribe. Hello, create your own tribe. I want you to. I want you to. I want you to go create your, uh, I mean, I know some of you were working on this. Create your own tribe. Gather your community and build them up and raise them out and send them. Uh, you know, praise Jesus. So I want, that's what I want you to see. There's a method to my madness. Sometimes it doesn't seem like it or feel like it, but I want you to raise up as leaders and then I want you to go uh, gather your people, lead them, but you, you're going to still need your safe hub. Here's, I need my coach, I need my, I need my safe hub, and you need your safe hub so we can go bigger to the world, bigger to the world, because I cannot do it alone, neither can you. Amen? Okay. Uh, let me bring them to the table. NACWI Leaders, Christian Women's Leadership Institute, both of these gals uh, joined this when it was brand new, and we're actually revising it, getting it ready for the next phase. Uh, they became certified group facilitators. They're all over the United States uh, that I've raised up. I just went to... Um, where did I go? I went to Arizona to help Joanne launch her groups. I'm going to be going uh, to Maryland to help Rachel. And so I want to bring on Karen and Rachel. So guys, come back on the screen with your video and your audio. And I'm going to have you answer a couple quick questions for us here. Yay. <clears throat> awesome. All right. So they are both on the screen. And let me just uh, show you these ladies right here. Can everybody still hear us or hear me? Uh, we'll check with them in just a second. But this is Rachel here on the left-hand side in her famous red dress. I have a famous yellow blazer. And uh, we, we all kind of have to retire these things after a while. It's like, Lord, I mean, how many photos can I be in in the yellow blazer, right? And then there's Karen here. And then in between, we've got Jamie. I'll just introduce everybody here. So we've got Rachel. We've got Jamie. She's in California. Rachel's in Maryland. Jamie's in California. And uh, Karen's in Texas. And this is Joanne that I was just with in Arizona. So, all right, ladies, I'm going to introduce you, or actually, I'm going to have you introduce yourself. So, um, we're going to go with Karen first with your name, your business, your location, and then how long you've been an ACWI member. I'm Karen Lindwall Borg, Rayma Counseling Associates, is a biblical counseling office in McKinney, Texas. And uh, the minute I met Diane and NACWI was probably about August, September of 2013. Uh, before we even talked face to face, I had started the Helping Professionals Alliance, which is a local and online networking group to help us grow our businesses together. Yes, indeed. And um, and then Rachel, go ahead and introduce yourself as well. Hi, ladies. <laughs> I am Rachel. I am the owner of Compass Consulting and Training Solutions. And I offer small business and nonprofit training as well as coaching, um, um, startup, some startup help. I launched the small, my small business institute this year. And as Diane cast it out there, <laughs> cast out there, I'm also going to be launching Curriculum Girl, which is writing and developing curriculum, is instructional design for small businesses and nonprofits. Excellent. And there's a huge, for, uh, well, both of you ladies, <clears throat> first of all, um, over the course of the time I've met you and known you, I've watched each of you. Here's the, here's the miracle of leading a group and, and being a leader. You get to watch your people grow up, you know, grow, not grow up. I mean, we're all, we're all trying to grow up and we're doing it in public, like as 40, or 40 and 50 year olds, but um, it's kind of embarrassing. Sometimes we fall down on the playground. <laughs> um, but I have gotten to see each of you in your own journey do different things, things that work, things that didn't work, um, grow as women, grow as business owners, grow in, in both of your marriages, uh, grow as parents. I've, I've got to see all of that from a vantage point, but also in person. 
Um, I've got to see that in person too and spend time with each of you. So what I guess the question I'm going to ask uh, to start us off is what have you learned about leadership from being in NACWI and also a part of the CWLI? I'll have Karen go first. <laughs> um, well, the first thing I think is that I, I need to be led mm. uh, while I am leading others and actually kind of leading myself to grow my business. I've got to have someone else's perspective, someone who's helping me think outside the box, someone who's offering me and pushing me, offering me new information, but also kind of pushing me to new places. Um, and then I thought earlier when you said you asked a question about what was something about what was hard about leadership, I think one of my roadblocks it has before I met you, Diane, was has been that while I am being led, I still have to own it. I still mm -hmm. have to know who I am, who I'm serving, what I'm offering. It has to fit with my faith and my values and the other you know, dimensions of my well-being. And I still have to make the major decisions. I still have to keep the ball rolling. It's still up to me. Mm -hmm. And then it's a trickle-down effect. I feel like I get, uh, you said it takes a village. So not only do I get coaching from Diane, but Diane's coach coaches me sort of from afar because it's a, there's a trickle-down effect. And then hopefully, as I coach and counsel other people, there's a trickle-down effect. It's, a, it's been an amazing process, and I think I've finally learned to trust. Mm, awesome. Um, and so are you guys able to hear Karen okay? I heard somebody say maybe um, next time when you share, uh, speak up a little bit more, Karen. Um, okay, awesome. Um, and then Rachel, what about you? What have you learned? And I'm going to ask you guys a, a couple questions. They, I, I told them to not overthink this, and I gave them one question. And really, I'm just going to make some up because that's what we do. Uh, when you are a coach, a leader, you're going to need to know how to ask questions. The, one of the key things you need in your life is conversation skills, question asking. You don't know the answers. We don't know the answers. I don't know what Karen thinks. I don't know what her biggest challenge is today. I might have known what it was yesterday if I asked her, but I don't know what has happened in the last 24 hours. We have to be willing to ask really amazing questions, and you learn to ask them by asking them over, you know, with lots of different people. All right, Rachel. Uh, so what have you learned about leadership by just um, really being a part of the NACWI as a whole, and then also, um, you know, the, the leadership training program that you went through? But I, you know, I like to listen, and so I have three, three, uh, three things that I've learned uh, from both. I think the first one for me, which is the most difficult, is to be vulnerable. Mm. People can't identify with someone who seems perfect, and that if you do not allow yourself to be vulnerable, if you don't allow yourself to say, "I don't know, but I can find out," that it's going to be hard to attract people to you, especially if you're in the coaching or the business development kind of field. That people are normally okay with. I didn't do everything right when I started, but this is what I learned. These are my sunken costs. If you think your $10,000 sunken cost is bad, hey, look at all the boo-boos I made. Um, and, so, and it'll be okay. So I think vulnerability is um, one of the things I have, I have learned. The other one is to hold my ground mm -hmm. and that, you know, if I'm doing business according to – um, my purpose and according to how God has instructed me to do business, that if I set my prices or if I set policies, et cetera, that I need to hold my ground. That I need to say, no, this is, this is how my business does it. And it's okay if you don't agree with it. There is a slew of other businesses out there that you, sh you know, that might maybe their policies or their prices will fit what you're looking for. So really to hold my ground and feel okay with that. And then lastly, that to thine own self be true, that mm -hmm. I have to know myself, I have to understand myself. Um, emotional intelligence is probably one of the biggest things I've learned and become better at since being a part of NACWI, which is a group for the women. So <laughs> yeah, uh, you, you really get to hone those emo emotional intelligence skills. So I think for me, those are the three things I have been grateful to learn. Awesome. 
And I, I wanted to come back to a couple of things you said, and then I'll um, ask another question. And ladies, if you have a question for either of these two gals, post it in the chat box now also. <clears throat> but I wanted to go back to one of the most powerful things about NACWI that I, I think you just hit on that sometimes I forget. Uh, I know a lot of women that really don't have very many friends, honestly. Uh, they don't have any good connections. They feel like uh, they've been hurt by women. Um, and, uh, and, and so I know that to be true because I, I mean, I'm not, I hear from a lot of different people. Um, so one of the powerful things about NACWI is not, I mean, you're not buying friendships. I'm not saying that at all. But I'm saying you're buying, you're buying, um, you're buying a, a sisterhood that has like such a, such a wide range of people. And just by being one with the group, one among many, and watching, we've got a lot of watchers. You know, uh, in, in every group, you're going to have 80-20. You're going to have 80% of the people that just sit there and stare and, and do nothing, and then 20 people that talk all day long. <laughs> and that's okay. That's the nature of groups. That's a, that's, a, that's a group dynamic. That's the nature of groups. And you're going to have the class clown. You're going to have the, you know, chatty, chatty talk box. You're going to have the, you know, you're going to have all these different roles at play in the group, uh, the take charge person. Uh, and so... Uh, and we have that too, but when if you lead women, if you run a, a membership program or a group of any kind, you can actually learn a whole lot by being a part of a, another sisterhood about what people are talking about, right? What are people concerned with? What are the issues of women today? And, um, and learn by observing. Uh, you're going to learn so much by, about your tribe by watching what they ask for. And we just sent out a big survey to all of our members, or all the members and to our non-members because we want to, again, we always want to adapt and upgrade. Your business is going to change. This is one of the key pieces of leadership I want you to hear. Your business is going to change over and over and over. If, it, if your business is the same as it was five years ago, then you've got problems. You've got some problems going on. Um, mine changes every single year. I know it will continue to do that. I'm a different woman than I was a year ago. Um, let me ask that, how are you different, Rachel? Well, no, let's start with Karen. Karen, how are you different, like, today than you were a year ago in November? <laughs> I think, uh, well, oh, I know now, okay. I have always been a, the type of person that looks at the big picture and is so overwhelmed that there's no fight or light for me there's just freeze i just shut down and can't function can't even get the first thing done so i think one of the things that i've learned to do this last year is just to relax mm. to look at my life and my business in uh, smaller sections smaller that that i can figure out you know i that don't shut me down yeah so uh, and I think coaching has helped me to break things down to doable pieces mm -hmm. and help me to focus on one thing at a time, one process. But another thing I think I've learned to do over this last year that it has helped me in my business is to multitask or multi-purpose so that even though I have a coaching business and a counseling business and I have to do the administrative part and I'm trying to write and I'm trying to create programs, I made sure that there was a theme running through all those programs at one time so that I'm not running in so many directions all at once. It's mm -hmm. helping me to streamline, really streamline things really well. And um, I want to just use an example here just because it came up as you were talking for me. One of the things we teach at NACWI is what I call, I created this, it's called the Creativity Circle. Oh, our words at NACWI are connect, create, collaborate. Um, and really what you will be doing for your business is taking the top, like one of Karen's specialties with her team is grief. Grief uh, is a huge problem for all, many of us related to a loss of a, a, a loss through divorce, through death, through, through illness. There's many, many grieving things we have to walk through. Uh, loss of a, uh, an addiction is a grieving experience too. Um, but we take our topic, this is, a side, this is a side training, so bear with me, ladies. We want you to learn how to take your topic and, and use it for all sorts of things. Uh, you're going to turn it into a grief book. 
You're going to turn it into a four to six week grief program. All these things Karen's doing right now. It's <laughs> cool. One-on-one uh, -on -one coaching or counseling related to grief. Speaking, she speaks on grief. A la carte products. Those are going to be the webinars you do that you sell a la carte. Uh, a two-day conference on grief or grieving for um, spouses even. Uh, that would be really good. Webinar series virtual one day. So um, I just wanted to bring that up because it came to mind when you were talking about learning to do one thing and then taking it kind of taking it around the bend with you, uh, not recreating things over and over again. You're going to create something and then you're going to use it in all different ways. <clears throat> um, all right, let's go to Rachel. Um, how are you different today than you were a year ago, uh, maybe in November or December of last year? <clears throat> all right, so my, my difference is not really related to my business. My difference is more personally so before joining NACWI as Diane started out by saying not having a lot of friends I probably could count the number of female friends I had on maybe one hand couple fingers um, because I just didn't I, I just didn't wasn't you know I just didn't do friendships very well I don't do drama well so I just didn't so I had a lot of trust issues when it came to women and it didn't matter the color of the skin I just had a lot of issues trust issues when it came to women and just feeling really let down, betrayed, etc. So when I came to NACWI, I was very, um, I don't think I was very interactive in the beginning and obviously my interaction has changed quite a bit uh, over the last year. But I think the ways that I've grown is being a part of NACWI has, um, I think, been very healing. I don't know if it makes sense, but it's been, it's been very healing for me. It's almost been like a bomb over those wounds I've had in the past from women and so I've begun to heal and begin to get my trust back and actually want to you know want to make friends there's a few naturally women that I would love to be friends with um so I think for me it, the change in the growth has been personal and I've seen myself blossom because of it because we need each other we really do need each other and so it's been absolutely a great place to heal a safe place to heal and um so that's it for me hmm. Well, my gosh. Uh, thank you, ladies. I mean, I should be paying you. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll pay you by referring clients to you. How's that? Because um, I believe that, that that's the best thing. We, I mean, the best thing we can do for each other, let me be honest about this. The best thing we can do for each other, everybody here in this room, is to refer, refer people to each other, right? I mean, isn't that, that's the highest compliment. The highest compliment is to say, you know what? I believe in this sister, and I, um, you know, she's got a good thing going on, um, and really to to refer people to each other so that we can help uh, build not just um, not just that woman, but her family, her team, her 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 legacy, her leadership skills. So uh, I love you guys, uh, and I'm gonna just ask: is, Was there any questions in the group? I'm new to the group. How do we find out about people's businesses? We're working on a plan for that, Holly. Uh, we're working on, I'll just give a little tidbit, we're working on the changes for the 2016 uh, and we're going to be adding some new pieces so that's going to be a part of it. So I don't want to get off into the weeds with that but we'll, we'll be coming back to that. <clears throat> the Facebook group is one way and if you need something specific asking for it there but we're working on a membership list that's going to be out uh, so you can all find each other. Okay. Um, any other questions for my two leaders? I've got one more question I'm going to ask them but you guys type into the box there. Um, we talk, you, you mentioned boundaries, and um, you mentioned tonight on self be true and hold our, hold that hold your ground. Uh, now I know this is hard. This is the hard stuff. So uh, how have you learned the hard way? How have you learned the hard way about uh, boundary setting as a leader? Karen. <laughs> oh gosh. Um. <laughs> I learned the hard way because before I met Diane, I had a associate in our company who just kind of took the company over mm. and almost had to get a restraining order to get her out. Mm. So when I first met Diane, I was, I loved what you said, Rachel, because I was really hurting. I was really wounded. Uh, and so petrified to even try to move the business forward because I'd seen what had happened. You know, right I think that 
that part of setting boundaries is just having the guts to do it. But what I really learned is part of setting the boundaries is first knowing, we've already kind of said this, who we are, what we're called to do, and actually what that looks like. Maybe what that looks like for the next quarter, not necessarily what that looks like for, but maybe what that looks like in one year, in three years, in five years. So my frustration at the very beginning of coaching was all of those questions. You know, I don't want to answer questions anymore about what my competitive advantage is. I really didn't actually understand what that means. I had to ask, what is, what do you mean by that? I really didn't want to ask more questions about who my ideal client was and what I was supposed to be doing with them. But that was the foundation that helped me to know where I was headed. And then I could set boundaries better because I knew who I was. I knew what I wanted to do. I knew what I felt God was calling me to do and what that actually looked like with skin on instead of just in my dreams. And I started seeing it unfold. I'm not that great still at boundary setting. And I think that's one of the reasons I have a coach because she can zing me every now and then and she kind of has to do that. Where do you draw the line? She asks me really good questions. Some of them very challenging. Um, I think as women, we just aren't good sometimes at setting boundaries. We don't want to hurt someone's feelings. We don't want to say no. Um, the other, the question earlier was, you know, what will they think about me if I fail, if I succeed, if, I, if nobody shows up? Well, what will they think about me if I set boundaries? that are uncomfortable for them. Yeah. It's a process. I'm not there yet. <laughs> well, it, it is a process. Um, Rachel, what about you? And then I'll, I'll kind of pipe in here. All right. So my, my boundary setting, the hard lessons, were me crossing boundaries that God has set. So, for example, I take it very seriously that I'm a Christian woman business owner. I'm not just a woman business owner, but I'm a Christian woman business owner, which means that the way I do business, how I do it, is going to be different sometimes from the way a non-Christian woman may do business. And sometimes what God's instructing me to do makes no sense to world logic. It's it's crazy. Sometimes I'm just like, are you are you crazy? It's cra it doesn't make any logical sense to what's in the books or what people say should be success. So the my hard lessons have been the boundaries that God has set. This is your purpose. This is your lane. This is what I want you to do. I cross them by listening to someone else's advice, mm -hmm. or I try to copy what someone else is doing, or I um, you know, I read books or go to webinars and seminars. I'm trying to incorporate all that stuff in my business when God has clearly outlined for me what I'm supposed to be doing. So for me. I know that's where I've gotten my whooping, my whoopings, quite a few. Um, because I'm hard headed, I just don't get it. And I'm a strategic, strategically and logical person. So when God says, you know, X, I get like a speed limit, like it's a um, suggestion, like God's saying, well, here's a, here's a suggestion for you. You know, kind of do it if you want to. No, these are clear instructions, these are boundaries. And so for me, it's, it's really been building that relationship with God so that I understand where my God boundaries are. So even if someone who has good intent, even if a coach says, Rachel, this is what I think you should be doing, sidebar, which is why I got a Christian coach, someone who prays, because that person is going to come to me and is going to confirm what God has already told me. Mm -hmm. Right. So even if someone comes, a coach comes to me and says, Rachel, I think this is, I was, this is what you should do with your business, and it doesn't line up with what, I, I, I'm convicted what God wants me to do. The answer is no, I can't. It doesn't matter how much money they tell me I'll lose and you can get more clients. It's not the point. The point is God is the one who multiplies. Mm. He's the one who multiplies. I'm just called to keep those divine appointments, to be obedient, to plant those seeds, to water, to do the work. He's the one who's going to multiply that. Mm. So, uh, and that's something I tell even the people that I, that I coach. If you're, if you're calling yourself a Christian woman business owner, then that means that those boundaries that you set for the way you get business, do business, have to be very clear, and they have to be God boundaries. They, mm -hmm. they, they cannot, they can't be, you know, just something you kind of come up with. You really, really have to have God boundaries. So that's, when, that's when he blesses you, um, is when you're obedient and faithful. So, 
That's and, and yeah, I'm going to jump in here and say amen to the fact that lots of the things you, that you're going to do really won't make any sense. You're, you know, it's like, well, this is just completely insane. Mm-hmm. You know, looking at it on a piece of paper, uh, this is insane. And and yet, um, sometimes that's where God is asking us to go, right? He's and He's saying, well, this is your these are your people. Walk ahead. You know, walk into the wilderness here. Um, and I wanted to just wrap up the time with these ladies with, uh, so the three words we, we embrace at NACWI are con uh, connect, create, collaborate. That's what we're all about all day, every day, which is what we're doing right now. We're connecting. We're creating something new together. Uh, that will, This is going to be uh, recorded and on YouTube and out to, to reach the masses. We're creating something new and we're collaborating by working together. Uh, and then the three C's we do not do, here's the three C's we do not do. We do not compare, we don't uh, compete, and we don't criticize. Mm -mm. We don't do those three uh, because those, will all, those are like the fear-based, those are the fear-based three. And if I'm comparing myself to Rachel, Rachel is a different girl than me. Rachel has different gifting. So does Karen. You know, if we're comparing, guess what? We're not doing our own work. Get your butt in the seat. Butt in your own seat. Hands on your own computer. If you're telling me how to run my business, well, golly, you might need to go run your own. <laughs> I've got plenty to do right here. I hope you have stuff to do. Um, so let me go ahead and thank these ladies. Golly, gee, I mean, was this helpful to have them on here to um, learn from them? I'm going to be bringing on our leaders uh, over the next, um, basically, I'm going to start doing this every single time because uh, this is how for me. Uh, this was awesome. I, I hope this was great for them as well. Um, and uh, good stuff, ladies. This is our little Rachel right here. I just wanted to show that picture. <laughs> uh, okay. And let me go ahead and give you some invitations. Um, and that's me hugging some of our, that's me hugging Jamie. And uh, there's Callie. And so we that was at our national conference. And that picture just makes me happy. And that's why I put it here. It just makes me happy. So surround yourself with uh, to thine own self be true. What makes you happy is going to light up your business. So go there, do that, uh, add more to that. Um, I've done that with the leadership group. I've done that now with the Hard Art Retreat. Uh, I would do that now with my, my coaching business over at dianecunningham.com. Um, I do that also with 90 Days of Brave. Uh, these women have been a part of 90 Day programs, and then uh, I've got my 90 Day, no, 90 Days, and then we're, we're launching Brave Adventures. Some of the Brave Adventures women are in the room, or they're, they're, they're praying over Brave Adventures. Brave Adventures is a one-year program. Uh, <clears throat> it's not for the faint of heart. Uh, so it's a one-year program that's uh, going to be launching here. We're doing early bird specials and, and fun, cool things, gifts and prizes, spa days and stuff. Uh, that you work with me for a year and we go on trips. We go on a writing retreat. We have a mastermind group in Florida. We have our trip to my timeshare down at the bottom of Texas. So if you want more information about Brave Adventures, uh, email me today and we'll get you the info. Or if you want more about 90 Days of Brave. There's some of you in the room that need 90 Days of Brave. Uh, and there's Karen and Marcia. Uh, we on our Brave deal this last year. I know we're just crazy as loons and we were out hiking and, and going on road trips and going to the Dairy Queen. <laughs> uh, but we had an amazing time. <clears throat> we had an amazing time. So uh, here's my invitation for you and my recommendation. There's three words I want you to write down. You need these for your business. I know we're about to be ending here. You need to write down the word invitation, opportunity, and recommendation. <clears throat> write those words down. You need to use them in your business. Invitation, opportunity, and recommendation. My recommendation is for those of you that are not members to come join us. Uh, you've seen it. You've heard it. Uh, I don't need to prove it to you. Uh, I, I don't. It's just right in front of you. Join us as an ACWI member in the next 24 hours, though. If you take action, remember what we talked about. Leaders take action. They make a decision. This is not a one-year uh, $10,000, $12,000, $20,000 program, people. Those are, the, those are the decisions that I'm praying over, okay? Uh, the $20,000 decisions are big ones. This is $197, $497, or 997 Take an action. Take an action. So if you get in in the next 24 hours, I'm going to send you a copy of the Inspire Business Toolkit. Then if you feel so inclined, you can go put it in a spiral bound, which is super fun. <clears throat> I'm glad I finally did that. It's very helpful. Um, but you can do that yourself if you so choose um, in the next 24 hours. So basically by 11 o'clock tomorrow, we need some action takers. Some of you are watchers, lurkers. 
uh, out on the sidelines. Come on, it's time. It's so time. It's past time. It's not. Uh, so join us at the 997 level to become uh, a certified group facilitator and a leader on my team. And then you'll begin to get chances to train and teach with me just like this throughout the next year. And, and you'll also get the Create Your Association training. Basically, it's just a big old pack of good stuff. <laughs> uh, so my mission in life is to inspire women to dream big, catch on fire, and change the world. I want you each to know what your mission is so that you can share that with the world all the time. Share it on videos, share it on audio, share it on uh, your business card, share it, share it, share it, so you know whether you're lining up with yourself, because we can get all the way off on a kilter. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and pray for you guys, and uh, for me too, because you know what, we all need it. We all need prayer. We all need prayer in our business, and our personal life, all day long, every day. Pray without ceasing, sisters, and surround yourself with the team, the tribe that can love you when you can't love yourself. Amen? And love you when you cannot love yourself. Hello. All right, I'm praying. Father God, thank you so much for these women in front of me. Thank you for the ones here on the screen that I just love so dearly. And thank you for all that are here in the chat room with us and, and those that will be listening and watching this later today or, or a month from now. Lord, we don't ever know like where our, our things are going to show up. Uh, Lord, but we want to honor you wherever we go. We want to really uh, have value, bring value to the table. Lord, we want to teach people what we know because it might be different than what they know. It most likely is. Uh, Lord, we want, to, we want to walk into leadership and we want to grab that microphone and stand on that stage and share whatever it is you've told us to share. Uh, Lord, there is no, there's no need for us to compete with each other. There's plenty in your, your there's plenty. There's just so much. There's so much. Uh, you are a God of abundance. You are a God of victory. And Lord, we are claiming that victory today. We are walking straight out into the fields with you. And Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, baby. I mean, these things fire me up, sister. So, uh, all right, girls. I'm going to close this out and get this uploaded. Thank you, Karen. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you. Yay. All right, ladies. Have a great day. And you better go click on the button and join NACWE, N-A-C-W-E.org. All right. I'll see you later. Bye.